Even terrorists in Iraq were afforded more due process than you and the Democratic majority have afforded the President. I know, because I served in Iraq, and I prosecuted terrorists in Iraq, and we provided terrorists in Iraq more rights and due process in the Central Criminal Court of Iraq than you and Chairman Schiff have afforded the President of the United States. So think about what he was saying there. Forget whether prior presidents caught up in the impeachment mess were treated better in the U.S. Congress. My next guest says that most terrorists are treated better than this one in U.S. courts. He is, of course, Republican House Judiciary Committee member Greg Stubbe. Uh, he has also been involved, by the way, in those court hearings, just like he is involved in this congressional one of the President of the United States. Congressman, good to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's really wild. But, uh, you know, a lot of people were confirming after I last spoke with you the same thing. Yeah, he's right about that. Yeah, we would have here, the goal was to prosecute detainees who attacked our service members in the Central Criminal Court of Iraq. And those detainees had defense counsel present at these hearings. They had the opportunity to offer evidence, it's exculpatory evidence. They had the opportunity to call witnesses, all of which has been denied to our president in all these closed door hearings in the Intelligence Committee. So to think that we as an American government would treat detainees who attacked our service members with more rights and due process than the Democratic majority is affording the President of the United States in this impeachment proceeding is, uh, is really telling. So uh, the President deciding not to have White House officials or counsel involved in, in these Judiciary Committee hearings, or certainly the one that, that commences on Monday, is that a mistake? Is it robbing him of a chance to make the very arguments that you are? I don't honestly know what they would do because, again, there's no fact witnesses. So the first hearing that we had in judiciary was a bunch of law professors giving their opinion on the Constitution and the impeachment proceedings. And this next one that we're having on Monday is from staff. So what's the White House counsel going to ask them? What questions about their report? Um, they're well, not was your fact fear as well, Congressman, that... Um, they could be setting up, you know, perjury raps against witnesses that uh, that, that this would, would be like a the president's called a kangaroo court kind of thing. Yeah, it's certainly a concern that they're going to have. And that's probably being that the Democrats have made this completely an illegitimate process all the way through. That's probably why they don't want to take part of it, knowing that they can produce that evidence, call witnesses and do those type of things in the Senate if and when the impeachment process moves from the House to the Senate. You know, Nancy Pelosi has never lost a vote that she has commenced. Uh, and so the argument is that by proceeding the way she's proceeding, she's confident she has the votes for impeachment. Do you agree? I, I, you know, I don't know. I haven't talked to a lot of these Democrats. I, I know she de they definitely have the votes in the Judiciary Committee. That'll pass right. completely party line. But I can't think... So you don't see a single Republican go. I don't see a Republican voting for the impeachment. How about in the House itself, where you have those who were elected in districts that the president won big last go around? I, I think you saw on the floor, oh, you're talking about the Democrats. Right. That, yeah, that, that's what I think is going to be interesting to watch. You've got 31 Democrats in districts that Trump won. Uh, we only need to take 19 back to take the majority back. I think those are going to be very tough votes. If you're a Democrat in a district that Trump won by four or six points, and you're going to be up for election in less than a year, uh, and you vote for this impeachment, your district didn't send you to Washington, D.C. to impeach the president. They sent us up there to pass a budget. You know, we're sitting here today. We don't have a defense budget. We've kicked our, our entire budget to December 20th. We have to vote on something before December 20th, or we go into a shutdown. USMCA hasn't passed. There's all these big things that haven't gotten done, and the Democrats that are representing these districts, I don't think those voters sent them up here to impeach the president. So that'll be tough for them to take home. You know these numbers better than I do, Congress, and I guess with absences and the like, it, they need 216 votes. But even if if they got the votes, let's say it was 216 to 215 to 214. I know a win is a win and it proceeds to the Senate, but would that be different? Would that have a different feel to it? Well, I think it was very telling that not a single Republican voted for the impeachment inquiry rules that we voted on in the floor, and two Democrats actually voted with us. So the only thing that was bipartisan was actually the vote against moving forward with impeachment. So That's I think, point. yeah, point. I, I think you won't see any Republicans vote for it on the floor, which shows that, you know, Nancy Pelosi, Chairman Schiff, Chairman Nadler have all stated if this isn't bipartisan, that if this isn't compelling to the American people, then we shouldn't be doing it. And they're going against their own word as of weeks ago uh, to push this impeachment process forward because it's not bipartisan. Um, let me switch gears a little. Uh, from your state, the news out of Pensacola and this uh, now seems to be a terrorist act. Uh, this Saudi national had been at the base for better than two years. 
nothing was telegraphed in his behavior that this kind of thing would happen. What, what do you think of the whole thing? You know, when I served in the military and training, in infantry officer basic course, we had Lebanese soldiers that trained with us. And I always wondered why we allowed uh, other foreign nationals to come and train with us. And I have a lot of questions. Uh, I'm going to be sending some letters and some, some requests to the Department of Defense and the Pentagon as to what is the vetting process for these individuals that are coming to train with our soldiers? Why are we doing it? What's the ven benefit to our nation? We now have people on our military base, where you, you would think is safe, who have died at the hands of a Saudi national. Uh, and there's a lot of questions that I have to ask as it relates they to They can that. fly F-15s, C-130s, now you hope not loaded to bear, but they're allowed to. Well, and I would love to know how he got a firearm on base. I mean, he's not an American citizen. He couldn't have gone down to a gun dealership and, and purchased a firearm. So as this investigation unfolds, I've got a lot of questions. One, as somebody who served and somebody who represents the state of Florida, and I think the American people uh, deserve some answers to why are we doing these programs? Is it right. safe for our service members? And uh, is that the best for American policy? Congressman, thank you.